Traders, how are you with Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy? Today, we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. Not a lot of news this week, only that World War III has just started. There's more bridges that we're going to hit other uh, barges, I should say, ships that we're going to hit other, other bridges. And we even have some news that they inflated the numbers from the pandemic. They're now starting to admit it. Let's go ahead and get started. On Monday, the New York Stock Exchange had its lowest volume day of the year. Uh, obviously, it's starting to get to a situation where I think a lot of the, the news about the war and everything is starting to, to numb people. But there's a situation now also where we did have the attack on Iran against Israel. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. I think this is actually just the beginning. It's not the, you know, it's not going to be the end. On Wednesday, there was a huge major sell-off in stocks due to the higher-than-expected report on inflation. This is extremely important because remember that the U.S. being the largest economy in the world, the majority of the economy is consumer spending, meaning you going out spending money, me going out spending money. And so there's a situation where people need to go out and spend money to continue the economy moving. And since 2008 and 2009, when we had a situation where they dropped the interest rates since the lowest on record, not since the history of the United States or 100 years, the history of the world, there was this huge economic boom basically based on debt. So everybody got used to that cheap debt because it only cost, you know, one, 2% to buy a house or, you know, to buy a car. So everybody's going out buying money, moving the economy. And now that the interest rates are a lot higher and inflation is starting to be a lot more stubborn, meaning it's not, not coming down, now there's a possibility where they may not drop rates at all or keep them higher for longer, which means that the economy is going to be affected in a negative way rather than a positive way. So this is a really big piece of news because now uh, that huge sell-off on Wednesday was because of that reason. Now people are saying, well, maybe the economy isn't going to be doing a lot better, especially, for example, in an election year due to the fact that inflation isn't going down what they thought it was. On the note of inflation, top economists, including Barack Obama's Treasury Secretary, Secretary, Secretary discovered the real inflation number under Biden reached 18%. If you don't know, the government actually changed the way that they calculated inflation in the 80s and the 90s. So it seems a lot lower than what it is before. But in reality, you and I both know when you go, for example, to the grocery store, you know, things are not just 4% higher. They're double or triple the cost of what we used to pay, right? And so when you guys asked me for the, the, the Five Guys story... During the pandemic in 2020, I went to Five Guys, bought a burger for two people, my uncle and I, two burgers, two fries, two drinks. It was 20 bucks for all of that. Now, literally, I think December of last year, 2023, it was $25 just for me. So get ready because things now that we have the situation with the war in Israel and, and Iran, there's going to be a problem with supply chains. If Israel, for example, reacts to that as well and attacks Iran back again, then it's going to be, you know, this could escalate to something that's extremely, extremely bad. Now, in regards to that war, since I touched the topic, essentially, the reason why I think this is the beginning is because Iran sent all these suicide drones to try to deplete the defense missile systems of Israel, which is Iron Dome. You know, it's an automatic. If you guys don't know what it is, it's like an automatic system that detects a missile, detects a projectile, and it sends a missile to shoot it. Outside of the fact that Iran probably spends $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 on its drone, and Israel is shooting down each one of those drones with a million dollar missile or millions of dollars in missiles, what's going to happen is eventually they're going to send so many missiles that Israel is not going to have enough missiles to deter or to shoot back. So that's what I think is going to actually happen, and this is going to actually start to increase. It's going to start to... Um, escalate between these two countries and then we might get everybody else involved, the US, Europe, Russia, everybody else because essentially you have China, North Korea, Iran, the whole Muslim world and Russia on one side and then you have the West on the other side. Essentially, that's, that's what it's going to go down as. The uh, stocks in the United States all negative this week. Canada also was negative in some of the conspiracy theory and weather news. 
26 barges. A barge is kind of one of those flat boats that they charge, they, they carry stuff on, quote unquote, break loose on the Ohio River heading towards bridges. There was another situation with another boat in New York City where the quote unquote power went out. Luckily, that uh, they, they didn't hit a bridge, it was averted. Avian flu was found in the seventh state as cattle restrictions. I want to kind of connect two, two, two dots here to see if you guys see what I'm seeing. You guys see the climate crazy people that stop highways and throw, you know, paint on, on historic paintings in Europe and they glue themselves to the floor. Remember that these are the same people that are saying that the meat is actually bad for the environment because, you know, of all the meth, all the farts that these cows have. So it, it's not too far for me to believe that this is some kind of act of terrorism to be able to force people to stop eating meat. Keep that in mind. This is, for example, one of the reasons why I like living in Colombia. One, because if there's a nuclear war, nobody's attacking Colombia or Latin America. But also because they don't have this kind of nonsense. Now, whether you believe it or not, one of the studies that was actually done, which is really interesting, is if you don't do industrial farming which is what they mostly do in the United States. If you let cows live the way that they're supposed to, I believe now it's called regenerative farming where you know you let them eat grass, walk on the grass, it's actually carbon negative. So Elon Musk was giving away a million dollar prize about the best way to ca capture carbon. It would essentially be to raise meat regeneratively. Regeneratively. The water restrictions have started in Bogota, Colombia, the capital down here. One of the largest cities in the world, Bogota, they decided to start rationing water due to the, the shortages of water that they're starting to have. In addition to that, New Jersey, I thought this was really weird. New Jersey's National Guard weapons, they're... The National Guard in New Jersey is doing a simulation exercise where they're doing a quote unquote hypothetical search for weapons of mass destruction in a basketball arena. Just, you know, just kind of practicing just in case. So you see where we're kind of headed with this, right? And the CDC said quietly that they accidentally, accidentally inflated children's COVID death numbers in a Co in a coding logic error and Japan releases irrefutable evidence that all of the variants during the pandemic were actually man-made. I think for the most part, we all know that, but I was hounding it since the beginning. They took down some of my YouTube accounts. I think we're on the same page now, right? Overseas market news, European markets were mixed. We have Spain and Istanbul at over 2%, both uh, Spain the most positive, Turkey the most negative. Latin America was mixed as well. The Bovespa, which is the largest market in Latin America, went down by 0.67% in Brazil. Africa and the Middle East was mostly mixed as well. And in the far, far east, Asia and Australia, that market was mostly mixed as well with the Taiex in Taiwan being the most positive. Bitcoin, not a lot of news in the space. Obviously, last week we had a lot of movement. For the week, it only went down 0.14% to 67,580. We'll see what it's actually going to do now due to the fact that this, this war is starting to escalate in the Middle East. And in commodities, the military tensions between Israel and Iran immediately triggered five-month high in gas prices at $90 a barrel. So... Even though oil went down for the week, U.S. crude went down 1.45% to 85.66, while Brent went down 0.79% to 90.45. We're now in a situation where it's most likely going to jump when it opens on Sunday evening, New York time, because of the situation that there's actually a war heating up. And one of the things I thought was interesting is, and listen to this carefully, Friday morning, uh, Gaza is shooting Israel with rockets paid for America. Israel is bombing Gaza with bombs paid for by America. And Iran is droning Israel with drones paid for by America as well. So if you, if you kind of had an idea of why we're in so much debt, essentially the U.S. is financing the war around the world. And this is essentially for themselves to get rich because they don't get hurt during a war. It's you and I, the normal people, to get hurt during a war. The... 
Silver and gold had had an amazing week. Gold hit a record high. It closed at two. Let me go down here. It went down to two thousand three hundred forty three ninety. Went up officially 0.58 for the week, even though it hit its fifteenth record high for the year. Gold is at thirteen point five percent positive. And one of the things that's interesting also is that there may be a situation now where they're not able to manipulate the price anymore in the West. There's countries like India and and China that are actually requesting physical delivery from the futures market. If you don't know the way that the futures market works classically, they were for commodities. You know, Starbucks needs whatever amount of tons of coffee, they put in a contract for it and then the coffee is delivered, right? That's kind of an overall summary to not get too technical, but now we have these countries demanding delivery, so the 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 inventories are starting to collapse, especially in London. And we also have a situation now where China is going to start dictating the price of these things due to the fact that two thirds of all the production annually of gold comes from China. And now they're going to start setting the price. Silver is also increasingly becoming an industrial and electrical metal. If you didn't know, silver is actually the highest conductive metal of all the metals right now in a lot of electrical, you know, uh, lines that they put in your houses, they use copper, but they they lose a lot of energy because it's not as conductive. Whereas silver is the most conductive metal. That's why they put them in solar panels and the EVs for the batteries because then you don't lose as much energy, right? So now one third or about 33% of all of the global supply is being used for solar power. Now, the problem is that we're already running a deficit in silver, meaning that there isn't enough being mined to provide to the market of what it needs. The market deficit has been going on for the last three years, and it takes about 17 years to turn a silver deposit to a production mine. So we're in a situation where the deficit of silver that is needed, meaning that the amount that we're short every year is continuing to grow. It takes 17 years to turn a factory online and there's nowhere inside do we have new factories going online, new, new mining deposits, you know, new uh, uh, mines essentially. So, that's why I've been so big on gold and silver for so long. Silver for the week went up 1.45% to 27.94. But eventually, we're going to have a situation where these things are going to just absolutely pop off. Thursday, coffee prices move higher as well. The Arabica uh, coffee now is at a six-month high, while the Robusa, which is mainly from Vietnam, for example, also hit a record high. If you didn't know, Brazil is the biggest producer of coffee in the world. After number two is Vietnam, and then after that, it's Colombia at number three. And there's a situation where they have some uh, shortages in production in the section, for example, in Brazil of Minas Gerais. They're, they only are receiving 12% of what they normally receive. So it looks like coffee, cacao hit another record high as well. It's really ironic that cacao per ton is actually more expensive now than copper, if you believe it or not. We've talked about this every week, but you know commodities are going to be on a big, big upswing very, very soon. Financial and banking news, the Treasury Department stated on Wednesday that the U.S. budget deficit is at $1 trillion deficit halfway through the current fiscal year. This is a, a very big problem because now the old debt that we've had that we have to renew is going to be renewed with much higher interest rates. So before, they could do the interest rates at 1%, 2%, for example, 3%, but now they need 5 6 7 8% for the same, uh, for the same debt. There's going to come a situation which is already happening where people don't want to buy U.S. debt anymore. So there's a situation where, well, we have to renew the debt, but nobody wants to buy it. So then we're going to buy it ourselves. We're literally going to create money out of thin air, quantitative easing, and buy our own debt. And that's what we're walking into now. And that's why we're probably going to have a lot more inflation because inflation is based on the money supply. It's simple d d demand and supply. If there's a lot of something, the price is cheaper, right? If there is a little of something like a Rolls Royce, the price is higher. When it comes to money, if the price is cheaper, that means that there's more inflation because inflation implies that the value of the money is going down. So you see what I mean? So this is a really, really big problem. Uh, we're spending now more money on the interest on the debt than defense, and defense is still by far the biggest expense that we have in our federal debt, and this is going to continue to grow the interest on the debt due to the fact that we have to refinance all that debt now. I mentioned about the CPI, it hit 3.5% year over year. 
a lot higher than expected. Uh, this is why a lot of the markets went down this week because of the expectation, as I mentioned to you in the beginning of the video, that they're probably not going to lower rates as fast as possible. And JP Morgan Chase went down by over 6% after they reported that they're not going to have as much revenue in the interest space. And in addition to that, the CEO, Jamie Dimon, said that a lot of people are underscoring the danger of the inflationary pressure. So now a lot of people are starting to talk about it in the mainstream news as well mainstream news economic news india's economic growth recently was the fastest pace in six quarters they grew 8.4 percent between october and december a lot of people are saying that india is going to be an important growth point in the region they have um essentially a lot of people are starting to move now a lot of factories from china to to india as well in corporate news, OpenAI board member said the quiet part out loud where almost all forms of human labor are going to be replaced by AI. And Tesla went up almost 5% after CEO Elon Musk unveiled that it's going to uh, report or present to the world their robo-taxi concept on August 8th. In addition to that, he also dropped the self-driving payments to $100 a month rather than before, I think it was 200 Google, uh, there hit a record high, 158.56 earlier in the day. They unveiled a new situation with the uh, with the chips. So if you guys can hear the dogs barking, and Amazon rose 1.67 percent after they hit an all new time high as well. They also are starting to get into the chip space as well. For example, following Facebook and Google's lead. And in the trade news, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that she's not going to rule out any measures, including more tariffs for China's green energy exports including solar panels and electric cars, for example. There was already a policy proposed or implemented, I should say, by President Trump of a 27.5 tariff from the U.S. to not allow them to affect a lot of the uh, companies in the U.S. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. Be careful with those rogue boats out there and the new war. And remember, preppers were right.